so I'm going to do another uh, one of these um, um, uh, manipulations, mathematical demonstrations. Um, and I wanted, you know, I was thinking, okay, so which one do I want to do it on? But I, I think I would like to do it on the oscillating uh, pi meson um, to demonstrate that that's in fact what's really going on. Um, and, you know, maybe I'll do a third one on the neutrino. But let's do this one first. Okay, so what we have is um, a meson, a U, a U quark and an anti U quark forming a meson um, that looks like this. Okay, so that's our U anti U meson, where this one, first part looks like a U, the second part looks like an anti U. Now, how we translate that if you recall from before, into a graph, is we label each one of the vertices, one and two, and then we'll label the matrix in terms of the columns and the rows, one and two. So on the first, in the first entry, let me just demarcate it that way, but in the first entry here, one, one, we ask the question on one, how many times is it connected to itself? Excuse me. And the answer is two. Oh. So we write in two. Now we ask the same question on this vertex. How many times is it connected to itself? And the answer is two, but in a minus sense. So we put in a minus two here. Really simple. And now we ask the next question, how does one connect to two? Well, the answer is that one connects to two with a single edge. The single edge is represented in our matrix by the number 1. And similarly, we ask the same thing. I was 2 connected to 1, and the answer is the same way, with one edge. So we put a 1 in this spot, a plus 1 here. Okay. So this matrix defines our uh, neutral pi meson UU bar. So the UU bar is distinguishing it as it, this one seems to be made out of a U and its anti and its anti uh, U, so we're going to call that chi one. Okay. Now the I what I'm representing is the idea or presenting is the idea that our other way of, of creating a pi meson, this thing at the bottom, which is formed from a D and its anti D. Okay that that, in point of fact, uh, that those two matrices can be transformed into each other. So the matrix that represents this, again, it's done in the same way. We've labeled each one of the vertices 1 and 2. And now we recognize that on vertex 1, right here, that there's one thing sitting on it. And so we put a 1 right here in the 1, 1 slot, a plus 1. And on vertex 2, right here, there's a minus 1 thing sitting on it. And so we put a minus 1 in this slot. And there are two edges right here, edge 1 and edge 2, that actually connect these two things. So when we go from 1 to 2, we go along two different edges to do it. So that 1, 2 entry is 2. And the same thing in reverse. So our matrix looks like this. Okay, We started up here with a 2, minus 2, 1, 1. And now we have a 1, minus 1, 2, 2. So we're asking the question, can those two things be transformed into each other? And the answer is yes. Now, the way we know that the answer is yes is because we find the characteristic equation of each one of those matrices first. And if they share the same characteristic equation, then they're transformable into each other. So in order to find the transformation equation of the first one, of chi 1, of the UU bar pi meson, what we do is we use our, our equation to find the eigenvalues, but it also produces the characteristic equation, that. And we stick in the values. We've got our chi is 2, 1, 1, minus 2. And we're subtracting from it 
lambda, 0, 0, lambda, as we've done before. See that? That's the matrix. And then we're subtracting this thing, which is that thing here. And when we do that, we come up with an equation or with a matrix that looks like what follows here. Next two. That's our matrix that we end up with. And now we take its determinant. And when we do that, we get the monomial, which basically means a polynomial in one variable. And we work out the monomial. We make it, we, you know, multiply everything up and make it look pretty. So our monomial in the non-pretty way looks like this. That's just taking the determinant of this thing. But we pretty it up by multiplying it out and arranging terms and doing the yada yada what what's. So we, we, uh, we work it out. Aren't you lucky that I'm actually working it out with you? My goodness. So you can see if I actually make a mistake. <laughs> and what we find is that we get lambda squared minus 5 is the monomial. Now, we're going to do that for our, um, again, this was for UU bar meson. It was for this meson right there. Now we're going to do the same thing for the other meson, which is taking the determinant of its characteristics, uh, sorry, taking the determinant of its matrix, um, and that would be 1, 2, 2, minus 1, minus lambda, 0, 0, lambda. Boop. Remember that? There we go. So we're going to subtract those from each other, and we get 2, oh, sorry, 1, minus lambda, 2, 2, minus 1, minus lambda. Okay, please, that's just a 1 right here. Now we find that determinant. And we get 1 minus lambda times minus 1 minus lambda minus 4 right here. That's the determinant of that thing right there. That's the determinant. And now we make it prettier. We multiply everything out, arrange terms. So minus 1, and then plus lambda, and then minus lambda, and then plus lambda squared, and then minus 4 and we get minus 5 plus lambda squared. Right? So this pretty little polynomial, or monomial, since it's only in one variable, is, in point of fact, the same freaking monomial that we just got before with the other version. This version is the UU bar, this version is the D, D bar pi meson. So we know, mathematically, that these two matrices can be transformed into each other with a similarity equation. Now, from my experience, I already know that the similarity equation, um, that the, the, the transformation matrix that does the trick here, um, is the same transformation matrix that we use to do the trick of getting the electron and the positron to combine to form a photon, to show that that actually works. So I'm just going to borrow that transformation matrix, and we're going to perform this out like we did before, just to demonstrate that, whoop, yep, it works. So the transformation matrix we use there looks like this. Oh, golly. We've got all sorts of strange pieces of paper looking at me in the face going, don't use me, don't use me. So give me a second, I'm rearranging, okay. They're saying don't use me because I've got written stuff on them that I want to keep. Um, okay, so our transformation matrix uh, was using that orthogonal uh, cosine, sine, cosine matrix and putting 45 degrees in there. So it was the 1 over the square root of 2, 1, 1, minus 1, 1. That was the transformation matrix that we used. Our transformation equation or evolution equation says take the transpose of that, multiply it by um, chi1, which is our UU bar meson, multiply that again by the transformation matrix, and you should get chi2, which is our DD bar meson. 
Okay, so that's our transformation matrix right here, our evolution equation. Let's see if it works. So we're going to take the um, transpose and a matrix and multiply transpose of the transformation matrix, multiply it by our UU bar U U bar meson. I know this is a, a lot of hefty lingo here. I apologize, um, but it's it's always good to be precise. That's the whole point here. Um, and then multiply it on the other side by the regular T. So that equation here is in fact this written out matrix equation here. Okay. So if we work that out, and let's work it out, let's see what happens. So we can move the 1 over the square root of 2, combine the 2, since they're really being multiplied by each other, becomes 1 half. We multiply the first two matrices together and see what happens. We get uh, 2 minus 1 being a 1. We get 1 uh, minus minus 2, which basically becomes 3. We get 2 uh, plus 1, which is 3. And we get 1 minus 2, which is minus 1. That being multiplied by the t uh, on the right-hand side. Okay, So that's multiplying right here, these two matrices right here. And now we're just bringing this one here. Um, we're just bringing this one here down to this. And now we're multiplying these two, which becomes uh, 1 minus 3, which is minus 2. Uh, 1 plus uh, 3, which is 4, uh, 3 minus minus 1, which is 4, and then 3 minus 1, which is 2. Okay, it becomes that down here. And if we uh, multiply that times the 1 half here, we can see that that becomes minus 1, 2, 2, 1. Okay. All right, that's what it becomes. Now, if we draw this out, we find that it really is this thing down here. Okay, right here. The difference, there is a subtle difference that I know someone's going to find, but the subtle difference is that that minus 1 is in point of fact up here, and this plus 1 is in point of fact down here, which basically means that if we draw it back out, that the negative... Uh, that the, the negative tadpole is on the first vertex and the positive tadpole is on the second vertex. Okay, that's what it looks like. Which is essentially the same thing right here. It's just reversed. It's just, you've labeled it, you've, you've literally just switched the particle, you know, one is two and two is one. So you've just turned it around. But that's how you get from this, from the, uh, this one right here, which is the UU bar to the DD bar, okay, using the same transformation. So we've just demonstrated, once again, that the pi meson, the UU bar version of the pi meson, can be transformed into the DD bar version of the pi meson, and back and forth. They can be transformed back and forth readily, okay? So I wanted to, to at least show you that, because it, it, it fair and near and dear to my heart. Um, so we've, we've shown a couple of things. One, we've shown how a particle and its antiparticle can form a photon, and we've shown how the UU bar pi meson and the DD bar pi meson keep transforming into each other. And um, we're going to stop it here, but I really would like to show some more things.